A federal judge has put a stop to development of oil and gas in the Gulf of Mexico. So now, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia recently invalidated a sale, which was one of the largest in the nation's history, of 1.7 million uh, acres of oil and gas leases. So that's awesome. Now, they ruled, the, the uh, judge had ruled, that the Biden administration had violated federal law by relying on a flawed analysis of the climate change impact of drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. So this is uh, fantastic news. More details. In his ruling, Judge Rudolph Contreras concluded that the Interior Department's Bureau of Ocean Energy Management had based its decision to hold the sale on flawed environmental analysis that miscalculated the greenhouse gas emissions associated with future oil and gas drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. Completed under the Trump administration, the analysis found that the climate impacts would be worse. And get this reasoning. If the acreage went unsold, because then oil companies with lower environmental standards would increase production somewhere else, leading to more greenhouse gas emissions. What? <laughs> what? Okay, so basically, you know, if we drill the if we drill the oil here, well then, or I'm sorry, if we don't drill the oil here, then someone else is going to do it somewhere else. But they're going to have lower standards. But we have higher standards. We've got the standards. <clears throat> we've got the greatest oil companies, the best oil companies. We've got the high standards. See, we get the high standards for drilling. You guys remember when the ocean was on fire? Remember that? High standards, high standards. Look, it's the same everywhere. <laughs> no company, no oil company has higher standards than another oil company when it comes to drilling. That's ridiculous. Absolute ridiculous logic. Worst attempt. It's sort of like, hey, you know, if I don't light your house on fire, well, then somebody else is going to light your house on fire. But somehow it'll be worse because I have higher standards. You're still lighting my house on fire. Please don't. But that's what we're doing. In a metaphorical sense, we're collectively lighting our house on fire by relying on oil and gas instead of actually working to develop renewables. All right. So now the model, uh, the uh, Washington Post continues, uh, and the set of assumptions that produced this result were, quote, arbitrary and capricious, Contreras wrote, reaching the same conclusion as both the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit and the District Court of Appeals for the District of Alaska in previous cases concerning lease sales based on a similar analogous. Uh, I'm sorry, analysis. The court believes, Contreras wrote, that the Bureau of Energy uh, of Ocean Energy Management's error was indeed a serious failing. I mean, yes, it's a failing, but it's not just like an oops. It's a no, no. See, we're, we're just coming up with this bullshit reason because our whole purpose and the purpose of the Trump Energy Department was simply this, burn, baby, burn. Yes, let, let's, let's drill, drill, baby, drill, and burn, baby, burn. That's it. So now, thankfully, this can be uh, reviewed now by the Biden administration. So now I'm hoping that the Biden administration will find that if they are actually serious about climate change, which they claim to be, that it might be a little bit better to keep it in the ground. I hope so. Now, the Interior Department, and this is what gives me a little bit of hope, okay? Uh, because you've got Deb Holland, for one, who's actually a progressive, the only progressive in the Biden administration. And she's been excellent. And so now the Interior spokeswoman, Melissa Schwartz, put out this statement, quote, uh, she said that given the court ruling in Louisiana, we were compelled to proceed with lease sale 257 based on the previous uh, administration's environmental analysis and its decision to approve the lease sale. So what she said basically is that uh, this had already been approved. We had put an injunction in there when uh, Biden first got uh, into power, got into office, tried to put a moratorium on it. That was reversed. That moratorium was lifted by another federal judge and that the administration was forced to make the sale. 
right? Now she's saying, well, we were compelled, but now we no longer have to be. We can do our own. And in fact, she said, we are now reviewing the court's decision concerning deficiencies in that record. Our public lands and waters must be protected for generations to come. We have documented serious deficiencies in the federal oil and gas program, especially in the face of the climate crisis. We need to take the time to make significant and long overdue programmatic reforms. Our work will be guided by law, science, and sound policy. So again, that makes me happy because I'm hearing programmatic reforms to the review process to ensure hopefully, and this is my hope, that they no longer, when they make these reviews, they're gonna find in the future that if we put, if we do any of these leases, if we pump any more of this oil out of the ground, that's, oh, that's too much. It's just too much. We've got to focus on renewable energy. I'm hoping so. And by the way, um, Brittany Hardy, an attorney for the environmental law firm Earth Justice, who worked in this case, said just that, quote, we're confident that once they do emissions modeling right, given the climate crisis that we're in, they will reach the decision that leasing doesn't make sense right now. Now, another thing that makes me a little bit more hopeful is this response. This is a spokesman for the oil and gas industry's largest trade, trade group, the American Petroleum Institute. Scott Lowerman, he just had this to say, quote, disappointing. Mm. Mm. Anytime, in my opinion, anytime that the American Petroleum Institute is disappointed, I consider that a win, a win for the climate and a win for all of us. So I'm glad that these leases have been shut down. That said, does the administration have much more to do? Yes, absolutely. They have a lot more to do to curb the use of fossil fuels and to help us transition into clean, renewable energy.